Hello, in the following video we will be seeing product recommendations in a liquid Shopify theme. We will create a section that can show some product recommendations generated by Shopify, and while doing so, we will be seeing how Shopify handles product recommendations internally. So, without further ado, let's get started. So here I have this development store already set up for this purpose, and I have the theme running locally over here in localhost 9292. So the first thing we are going to do is to go to the sections folder, we are going to create a new section called recommended products that liquid. The theme I am using here is done, which already comes with a similar section called related products, which is this one. However, we will be creating one from scratch over here so we can see how this works. Now let's start by adding the schema. So over here, I will do a schema and then a schema and then let's keep this schema name so recommended products and let's copy this right away and create a preset with this name so it shows in the theme editor next we are going to add a single setting over here with type range the id will be products to show the label will be products to show The minimum, let's say it is 1, and the max is 10. And by default, let's say that is 4, and the step is 1. And let's save this. The reason I set the maximum as 10 in the settings we just saw is because, as you can see in the documentation for the product recommendations endpoint, which we will be using later in this video, the limit parameter, which is the one that controls the number of results shown, is a value that can range from 1 to 10, and if not provided, it is using 10 as a default. So because of this limitation, we had to keep that setting limited to 10 as well. Next, let's build the code for this section. So let's start by wrapping all of this in a div to the class page width, which in this theme serves as a container class. Then I am going to do if recommendations dot performed and recommendations dot product count is greater than 10 then we are going to enter over here to render the recommendations recommendation by the way is an object that Shopify is providing us you can quickly see over here that it is used for product recommendations and which properties are available in this object so going back to the code over here we are going to now right here Recommended products. I am hard coding the title, but you could make it come from a setting if you want. And then over here, let's create a UL and give it a class of recommended products. Great. And then let's do for recommendation in recommendations of products and close the for loop. And then over here, we are going to render a list item and we are going to render the card product, which is already a snippet that is included in this theme. And we are going to say that the card product over here is this product. And we are going to save this. And now from the theme editor, I go to add section and look for recommended products over here. We are going to see that the section is added but nothing is showing. The recommendations we are seeing above this are from the related products section that Shopify has already built in in this theme. However, we are building a section similar to this from scratch over here and nothing is showing. So let's see why is that. So the reason for that is because recommendations.performed is returning false. And I know it is returning false because if we come here to the documentation, it says that it returns true only when it is being referenced inside a section that has been rendered using the product recommendations API and the section rendering API. It returns false if not. So we are not rendering this section using any of these APIs yet. So that's why we are not seeing anything in the section when we added it here. So let's fix that and let's start by hiding the one that comes to the theme by default so we don't get confused with having two set of recommendations here. Let's save this and now we don't see any sort of recommendation over here. Let's go back to the code and let's create a script over here 
and the name will be recommended products .js. and let's defer this like this we are going to create this file by clicking over here copy this and then pasting it in the assets directory so recommended products.js and over here we are going to create a custom element so recommended products this extends of html element in the constructor i am going to call super and then i am going to do custom elements dot defined recommended products and pass this class over here now i am going to copy this element just like this and wrap all of this in this tag so just like this and we are seeing this underline over here because i forgot to add asset url so shopify knows where to get this file from now we also have to pass here some data attributes so let's do data url this will be equal to routes dot product recommendations url and then over here let's add a query parameter for limit and this will be equal to section dot settings dot products to show we will also add a data product id attribute over here and add the product id and data section id over here and add this section id and now going back to the custom element i'm going to create here an async method called load recommendations over here let's do a fetch and the url will be this dataset dot url then we will do product id will be equal to this dot the dataset dot product id and then section id will be equal to this dot dataset dot section id we save this after this we will get the response so response html this will be equal to await response dot text and now we are going to create the html for this i am going to do document dot create element and i am going to create a div then for this div the inner html of this div will be equal to response html and now over here the recommendations will be equal to html.query selector and we are going to query for this element over here and we check if recommendations dot inner html dot trim dot length is greater than zero then we are going to do this dot inner html will be equal to recommendations dot inner html and save this so to understand what this is doing here we are fetching the section using the product recommendations api we need to pass over here the product id so we know what product to get recommendations for and also the section id so we know what section is going to be rendered using this api the response is some html in raw text so we can't run query selector on it yet as it is just a string an easy way to turn this into a DOM node is to create a div, as I am doing here, and then setting its inner HTML to be the HTML of the response we got, like I'm doing in this line. After that is done, we are able to run query selector in there to get these recommended products from the newly rendered section. And we are going to check now its inner HTML. We are going to trim any white spaces over there, and we are going to check if the length is greater than zero. If it is, then it means we have new product recommendations in there. So we are going to replace the inner HTML of the initially rendered recommended product section, which as, men, which as we saw earlier, it is empty. We are going to replace that with the inner HTML of the newly rendered recommendation section, which now should have content. So now that we saw how this is working here, let's see it in action.
Before continuing, let's make sure we are calling this method. So in connected callback, which is a method that is called at the beginning of the life cycle of this custom element, we are going to call this dot load recommendations. Then over here, there is an issue as well. And we are telling this conditional to only enter here when the product count is greater than 10. It should actually be when it is greater than zero. And over here, we should be passing recommendation, not the product. So after fixing those issues, we should be able to now go to the page and see our list of recommendations. So you can see over here that now in the recommended products section, I am getting some product cards being rendered over here. We need to do some CSS adjustments to this, but you can see over here that in this request, the response is the HTML that is being rendered over here. Now let's add a style block over here to add some styles to this section. You can move these styles to their own file, but I am going to keep things simple and just put it here for this example. So let's copy this class here and give it a display of lights. No, let's give it a display of grid actually. Let's give it a gap of 10 pixels. And let's, let's do grid template columns. On mobile, this will always be two columns, so we will do that. But then on desktop, which we will just do by doing in width and 1024 pixels, we will do this. And we are going to do grid template columns repeat. And let's just circle this to be four. You could control, control both of these numbers from a section setting if you want it. Let's also remove the initial list styling by doing list style none and by left zero. Let's save this. And now we get the product recommendations looking like this. And there is a small CSS issue with the display of the cards here. To keep things simple, I am just going to do card dinner, the media, and then a position a static. And that should fix the display issue over here. And we should now be seeing the card images. But of course, you could render the recommendations however you want. If you hover over this recommendation object over here, you can see that it is a product in the store. So it has all of the different product properties that you are used to. The biggest difference of that recommendation product object and a normal product object is in the URL. If you hover over any of these products, you can see that the URL has some additional parameters. You can see that in the bottom left side of the screen. These are some tracking parameters which Shopify uses internally to figure which recommendations are being clicked more by customers, so they can then prioritize those and adjust the others as needed. Before closing the video, let's take a look at where those recommendations are coming from and where you can control them. For that, we will need to have the Search and Discovery app installed. This is a free app by Shopify, and with it, we will be able to control different aspects of search, filtering, and what's relevant to us in this video, product recommendations. To install it, you just need to go to the Shopify app store, look for Search and Discovery, and it should be this one over here. I already have it installed, so I will go back to the admin side of my store and click on the app. From here, we can see that we have these different options. We will focus on the recommendations one and we can see all of the different products that are in this store. Now let's focus on the related products column. Over here, you can see the different recommendations that Shopify has by default. All of these have this purple icon over here, which means that they are auto-generated. If we click on any of these products, such as this, we are able to scroll over here and we are able to add a minor recommendation if we want. So for example, let's look for the complete snowboard and I can add this recommendation over here and it will be added to the top. There is also the option to hide auto-generated recommendations if we want to do that. And after clicking on save over here, if I visit this products page over here, the 3P fulfill snowboard. And if I look over here for the 3P, fulfill a snowboard and click on this and I scroll to the bottom, we can see that now it only has a single product recommendation, which is the exact item that I added over here. So the complete snowboard. And that is just a small part of what this app can do. If you want to see a more complete overview, there is a video in the channel where I cover this app in detail. 
I will be leaving that in the video description. And that's it for this video. Now you know how to build a native product recommendation section for your Shopify store. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content and I will see you all in the next one.